On the 19th of November 2014, Vietnam's National Environmental Police raided three warehouses in the city of Nha Trang and discovered more than 4.3 tons of dead marine turtles. A month later, local police raided three additional locations connected to the same criminal network and found 4,000 more marine turtles. Identification is not yet complete, but so far most of all of the turtles appear to be hawksbills, an endangered species which is fully protected under Vietnamese law. The punishment for hunting, trading, storing, processing and selling these animals is up to seven years in prison. The combined volume of turtles seized in both raids was more than an estimated 10 tons, making this the single largest seizure of marine turtles in world history. The raids came as a result of a three-year investigation by ENB that began following the seizure of a Vietnamese registered fishing boat loaded with more than 200 dead marine turtles in Philippine waters in 2010. This incident was followed by the seizure of additional fishing vessels in the Philippines in the following few years, all of which were registered to a port in Vietnam's Quang Lai province. Since then, ENV has conducted interviews at the port in Quang Lai with key middlemen and others with knowledge of the trade, including the crew of one fishing boat shortly after their release from prison in the Philippines. These interviews revealed that an organized criminal trade network headed by a man named Huang Mang Quang was buying up large quantities of marine turtles, processing the turtles at a factory in Nachang, and smuggling the finished trophies to China. Wong has a past record of illegal activities, including a case in 2009 when more than 800 live marine turtles were discovered on a floating farm that he owned. At the time, Wong was said to have used his considerable influence to avoid prosecution. It was not until October 2014 that BNV was able to confirm the presence of a shipment of marine turtles in Wong's processing factory in Nachang. EMV then alerted national authorities and provided them with evidence of criminal activity. This collaboration resulted in the raids of November 19. Following the raids, Huang's brother quickly stepped up and accepted responsibility, though police and others familiar with the case know without question that Huang is the true kingpin behind the operation. What remains to be seen is whether the justice system in Vietnam will deliver appropriate punishment to Huang for his serious crimes which have both national and international implications. This is an important opportunity for Vietnam to show that it can meet its global obligation to eradicate wildlife crime and the criminal organizations that engage in such activities.